to Stan the Wine Man TV. I am your host, Stan Rutan, and this is the Blue Collar Wine Show, where I help you spend your wine dollars wisely. We're going to northern Italy, northwestern Italy, actually, to Piedmont, where we will look at the grape Dolcetto. A lot of you may not have tried Dolcetto, or you're not familiar with Dolcetto. It means a little sweet one. It's, a, it's not sweet, though. They're all done in a dry form. It is a uh, early ripening grape, very similar to Merlot, and uh, it's a cash crop for uh, the winemakers in northwestern Italy. Uh, Nebbiolo, of course, is the big, the king, queen, whatever you want to call it, of north that part of uh, Italy. Barbaresco, Barolo, uh, high dollar, high acid wines that need aging and are very, very sought after. Barbera is the other grape of the same region. Uh, Barbera is a higher acid wine and a very good food, a very food friendly wine and it actually is the main stay of the table for winemakers in that region. Dolcetto, however, is um, a early ripening grape. It is usually grown in the higher elevations of, of Piedmont where you cannot grow Nebbiolo. Uh, it's a cash crop. Uh, they use it to, of course, put money in the bank while they're aging their Barbarescos and Barolos. Uh, Dolcetto is meant to be drunk young. Uh, it's got low acidity and high tannins. So in order to get around those tannins, a lot of times they use gentle maceration so they're not extracting a lot of tannins out of these wines. And um, uh, the only problem with that is it's challenging the aromatics because they're not getting as much of the tannins that give it the aromatics it needs. So you can understand why Dolcetto is not definitely not the most respected grape of this region. But I like Dolcetto and the reason I'm doing this is because I kind of have a hole in my portfolio at, war, at the store. I don't have Dolcetto on the shelf. I do now. But uh, thankfully Ben came along and said here you go, here's some Dolcetto to try. I want to apologize for not being on, the, uh, on YouTube recently. Um, my scheduling has been very uh, interrupted by the, how busy it is at work. And the last one I did, I did two episodes, and there was so much interference. I had people working downstairs and doing all this stuff. It ruined the sound quality. So I'm going to do this, and hopefully the sound comes out good. Hopefully it's not my camera going south on me. Let's get started right away. The Franco Serra Dolcetto D'Alba 2016. This rolls in at $11.00. We sell a lot of their Barbera. It seems dark, my camera seems dark, but I think it's just the way the lighting is, because from the other side of the camera, it looked okay. I think I might have to invest in a little better camcorder. I got this one. I've been really happy with it, but I've had it for a while, so it might be time to invest in a new camcorder. Got the big glass. I don't want to. I, I, I pulled out the big glass because I thought, you know, even though uh, Dolcetto doesn't get the respect of Nebbiolo and perhaps Barbera, I thought, well, let's get show it a little respect. I've had some very good Dolcettos in the past. So D'Alba, you're familiar with uh, uh, Barbaresco D'Alba. Well, uh, these are, this is a region, a town up in northern, northwestern Italy, in Piedmont, where they grow a lot of Nebbiolo, Barbera, Barbera and obviously Dolcetto. Let's see what we get on the nose. So very earthy. I get a little like a um, lot of um, red berry and uh, tart cherry aromas. Getting a little bit of bark coming through, which I like. So interesting thing about Dolcetto is uh, now, well, it's nice to see the trend now of people going back towards, uh, uh, what am I trying to say, old world style wines. We're seeing a trend back that way. I don't know if you've noticed that, but I have. But for a long time, because of certain wine critics, uh, even Dolcetto started coming out high alcohol, uh, very, very uh, plush wines, more in a new world style. I really don't like to see that because we want to go to wines that have sense of place. And I hate, I do not like it when winemakers try to satisfy some critic's palate or, you know, people that are, I mean, I know they want to sell their wine. That's obvious. 
But it's nice to see a new audience of people coming out that like the old style, old world style wines. Let's see what we get on the palate. I like this, it has a rust component coming through. Things that you really like about old, old world style wines. A lot of rust with cherry notes, a little bit of like crushed brick action coming through, a little bit of tobacco. A little sweet fruit coming through on the mid-palate, but immediately transcends through the finish with a little lot of rusty kind of uh, mineral driven red. So you can tell this is not high acid. What they do with Dolcetto sometimes they pick it, harvest it a little bit early to give it a little more acidity, but generally speaking Dolcetto is a low acid wine. But this is a nice wine. You can have this with food. I can see you doing this with pizza, hamburgers. It's a really nice, simple uh, Dolcetto for 11 bucks. I'm going to go C plus B minus on that. I think it's definitely worth the price. Okay, here we go. The Nada Giuseppe Dolcetta di Alba. Same region, same town as this one. 2016. This rolls in at $12. So you see we're not talking a lot of money here. You understand what they're saying about cash crop. And these are meant to be drunk early. Uh, you don't, generally speaking, do not age a Dolcetto. Yeah, that the um, Franco Barber, Franco Serra, well, Chet was just a nice table wine. I, I like that sometimes for 11 bucks. Okay, let's see what we get on the nose. This has a little stink action on the nose. I'm getting almost like a dried cardboard component. I often refer to dry cardboard because I've worked in I've been in the grocery business for a long time. Well, I haven't been in the business. I've been working in the grocery field for a long time. And I remember going to the warehouse when I worked on Night Crew and uh, you know, just that dried cardboard smell. Different than cork. Cork is kind of a wet, moldy cardboard sort of thing. A little bit challenging to get a little bit of licorice, a little bit of tobacco. Let's see what we get on the palate. Very simple wine. I mean, this is like the Franco Serra had some interesting qualities. This has like a like a, a beam of brightness, though, front to finish, like like uh, cranberry and uh, underripe cherry tones, front to finish. But it doesn't do much in that. It just kind of has this like right across your palate. Uh, no, uh, you know, like at least this one had sweet fruit in the mid palate. Rust. This one just that beam of cranberry, underripe cherry, maybe a little bit of yeah, no, a little bit of underripe raspberry, red raspberry. This one has maybe a little bit of stem, like blackberry stem coming through. But overall, kind of disappointed in this one. I'm going to go um, C minus D plus. It's you know, it's just I would not want to represent. I wouldn't want to represent Dolcetto with this wine. It just doesn't do anything for me. It's just not there. Okay, let's move on. The um, Viticultor Moro Molino Dolcetto di Alba. We're still in the same area. 2016. This rolls in at $14. I sure hope this comes out with some light on it. I 
kind of scares me because I can't see my face really. It's probably beneficial for you guys. Okay. So one out of two so far. Let's see what we get on the nose. I do a close up of that. Yes. Boy, a lot of parazine on this one. I get uh, kind of like you just walked into a, a blackberry bush, you know, and you kind of have that, but dry uh, blackberry stems and leaves and all that. A little bit of tomato stem coming through. That's interesting, very interesting. Yeah, I'm getting almost like a blueberry component coming through. Kind of perfumed a little bit, like perfumed cherries, I guess, is what I'm getting from this one. A little bit of licorice as well. Let's see what we get on the palate. This has a, and um, this is kind of boring as well. I'm just going to be straight up about it. It's kind of boring. Um, this has kind of a, but it does have an interesting, almost like a chocolate tobacco-y sort of thing going on in the, uh, just at the beginning of the mid palate into the finish. A little bit of rust on the back end. Uh, so this has a little more going on than the nada. Nada, what a great name. Nada, nada. Still, I'm not excited about this wine. It, it has, you can get the tannins. Now, this one really kind of shows up the tannins a little bit that uh, Dolcero can have. And it's kind of, I'm, I'm very interested in this one. Seems a little closed. Might, you might want to decant this one a little bit more. I opened it about an hour ago. Um, this has a, a leathery component, but it has that kind of chocolate, tobacco. Uh, it is low acid. It doesn't cut through, but th there's a brightness to it as well. Um, let me try this. So, like I said, real grippy on the back side. They've allowed the tannins to kind of come through on this wine. Uh, still kind of boring though, not really a lot going on. Um, you would definitely have to have this with a stew or a steak or a hamburger. I wouldn't do it with pizza. The tannins, um, and I'm not fat on the pizza. Maybe if you had a lot of pepperoni on it, you could get by with this one. Anyway, um, still kind of boring. I'm just going to go straight up. C minus C, uh, C minus C on that one. Um, not excited about those last two. Let's move on. Now we're getting into an area, Doliani, all they do in Doliani is Dolcetto. So they really focus on this grape there in this region. So this is the Papa, um, whether it's uh, Chelso, Papa, Chelso, there's not two C's though, so it could be Celso. But we're going to go Papa Chelso. So this is the, uh, this is the Abano Papa Chelso Doliani Dolcetto. Now it doesn't even say Doliani. It doesn't say Dolcetto because they don't have to because all they do is Dolcetto there. Here's a little close up of the label. Now this is uh, runs in at $28. So a little bit more. They put more into it, of course. So let's see. I've, I, you know, I've, it's been a long time since they have the Doliani uh, Dolcetto. So you have to kind of know that. If it just says Doliano, Doli, Dolihani, you have to know it's a Dolcetto because that's all they grow in that region. It's kind of like if you say white burgundy, you know it's Chardonnay, right? Same idea. So this is 28 bucks. This is not an everyday red wine unless you're loaded, which I'm not. I consider $28 like that, you know, in the upper scale things. 
not an everyday way. Let's see what we get on the nose. Good extraction of color. Sometimes I don't point that out. I hope that doesn't disappoint me. And how many of you, in fact, make a comment for me, please, because I need some feedback from you guys. I don't get a ton of comments. Um, I think the community I live in, a lot of you guys just don't like to do that. Uh, you, you see me every day at the store. Uh, I have, um, even Alan gave up. I think I got a little defensive sometimes. I got to thicken my skin sometimes. But even Alan, Alan, give me some input. Good color. I think you guys like to see the color sometimes. I would have. All right, let's see what we get on the nose. This is definitely perfumed. Um, I get, uh, there's a lift of perfume coming off of this one. Definitely kind of a berry medley, you know, and a little bit of kind of cherries with raspberries or red berries kind of mixed with branches. And that little kind of a soapy perfume, like if you had a, you know, a, a bar of soap, you know, really nice soap, that was made up of cherries, and raspberries, and, and red berries, and branches, like dried branches, all kind of whipped together, that's what I'm getting. Maybe just a hair of tobacco. Let's see what we get on the palate. I'm excited about this one. Definitely a huge gap in quality. This is a, has good fruit to it. Like I, I'm getting a little bit of current action, a little bit of chocolate, cherry, currants, a uh, lot of spices. This very spicy wine. I like that. Ah, it's a spicy red. I do. I like spicy my reds. Not all the time, but in this case, this is really nice. Good complexity, good structure, good balance. Uh, finishes with a little bit of that rust action. Those tannins kind of come through, but they're in balance with the fruit. Oh, I really like, like that dark fruit component coming through. And the tannins kind of at the end just kind of gripping. But you could you could drink. Now this is one of those wines I think if you like old world style and you want to just have a glass of red, this would be okay. Um, a little bit tight. I think you could have some really good cheese with this one. Some dried cheese like maybe some uh, old Amsterdam would be really good with this one. Uh, just any sort of cheddar would be really nice. Um, I definitely steak. In fact, I'm, gonna, I'm having steak tonight, so I'll probably kind of hold that one back and have that with my steak tonight. But definitely a rise in quality, easily seen, worth the 28 bucks. Yes, I'm going to go A minus A on this one. I think it's a great bottle of wine. So kind of two very disappointing. First one, if you just want a really nice example, Dolcetto, Franco Serra, really good. But this one from Doliani, obviously a step up and obviously worth every penny. Thanks for taking a little bit of time out of your day to watch. Catch me on Twitter at, at StanTheWineMan. Same on Instagram. Please comment if you want to see something. Let me know what you want me to do. Did you, did you, did you like this episode on Doliani, on uh, Dolcetto? Did you know much about it before this? You keep watching, and I'll keep helping you spend your wine dollars wisely.